Okay, I don't know what the hell that was about. Seems alright now. Alright, yes. I had to make a decision. She had to come to my house and see me having fun, and she got all sad. Well, no point wasting any time. Oh, yeah, I forgot my name was Killmaster, okay. You'll always be my dearest friend. What you need most is for things to be like they've always been. Monica told me the truth. She told me how much happier you seemed after I joined the club. I know you're struggling with some really difficult feelings right now. But, please trust me that I know what's best, and what will make you happy in the end. I promise I'll help get things back to the way they were. I... I... see. Sayori forces a smile through an incredibly pained expression. Haha, <laughs> is this what it feels like to get stabbed in the chest? I should write a poem about this. Sayori, it's okay. This is just my punishment. Remember? For being so selfish. So please. Please don't worry about these stupid feelings. I know you're right. I knew this whole time that there's no happiness down that path. That's why I came here. Just so I could get the answer I needed to hear. And the other thing. You're also right that I just wanted to go back to the way it was. I realize that now. You really do know me better than anyone, Killmaster. I'll trust you with anything. Anything at all. So... Sayori's final smile finally breaks. All of a sudden, she turns around and drops to her knees. I know that hurts. Ah! <laughs> Clutching her head with both hands, she screams as loudly as she can. I'm so shocked that I don't know how to react. Sayori looks over her shoulder and flashes me one more weak smile before turning around and running off. Sayori! I'm left helplessly standing in the front of my house. Why am I feeling so horrible about this? There's nothing more that I could have done! I did all I could! The most I can do is support Sayori through her feelings and help her on the path that's right. But I'm having as much trouble understanding Sayori's feelings as she is. Even though I can comfort her, I keep wondering if I should be doing something more. Or something different. I know these thoughts will continue to plague me until things are back to the way they were. I'm going to give it everything I've got. Sayori will always be my dearest friend, and I'll do whatever it takes to put a smile on her face every day. Let's give her some food. Should work. Oh, it's the day of the festival. Of all days, I expected this to be the one where I'd be walking to school with Sayori. But Sayori isn't answering her phone. I considered going to our house to wake her up, but decided that's a little too much. Meanwhile, the preparations for the event should be nearly complete. The banner Yuri and I painted is dry, and I gently rolled it up to take with me. She sent me a pleasant text reminding me not to forget anything, and I reassured her that I forgot everything. Funnily enough, I probably feel the same way as Natsuki about the event. I'm more excited for it to be over so I can spend time with Sayori and Yuri at the festival. But mostly Yuri. But knowing Monica, I'm sure the event will be great too. Killmaster, you're the first one here. Thanks for being early. That's funny, I thought at least Yuri would be here by now. Monica is placing little booklets on each of the desks in the classroom. They must be the ones she prepared that is all the poems we're performing. 
In the end, I found a random poem online that I thought Monica would like and submitted it. So that's the one I'll be performing. I'm surprised you didn't bring Sayori with you. Are you? Yeah, she overslept again. That dummy. You think that on days this important she'd try a little harder. I say that, but I suddenly remember what Sayori told me yesterday. And I suddenly feel awful knowing it's not nearly that simple for her. I only said it because it's the way I'm used to thinking. But maybe I should have gone to wake her up after all. <laughs> you should take a little responsibility for her, Killmaster. I mean, especially after your exchange with her yesterday. You kind of left her hanging this morning, you know? Exchange? Monica, you know about that? Of course I do. I'm the club president, after all. But... Did Sayori really tell her about it that quickly? About how I basically turned down her confession? That makes me really seem like the bad guy here. But I'm the one who knows what's best for her, right? I am... The guy. You don't know the full story at all, so... Don't worry, I probably know a lot more than you think. <laughs> Monica is bringing as friendly as usual, but for some reason I felt a chill down my spine after hearing that. Hey, do you want to check out the pamphlets? They came out really nice. Yeah, sure. I grabbed one of the pamphlets laid out on the desks. Oh yeah, they really did. How about that? Something like this will definitely help people take the club more seriously. Yeah, I thought so too. I flipped through the pages. Each member's poem is neatly printed on its own page, giving it an almost professional feel. But not quite. I recognized Natsuki's and Yuri's poems from the ones they performed during our practice. What's this? I flipped to Sayuri's poem. It's different from the one she practiced. It's one that I haven't read before. Percent. Get out of my head. Get out of my head, 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 get out of get out of my head, get out of my head before I do what I know is best for you. Get out of my head before I listen to everything she said to me. Get out of my head before I show you how much I love you. Get out of my head before I finish writing this poem. But a poem is never actually finished. It just stops moving. Huh? What is this? It's terrible! Reading the poem, I get a pit in my stomach. Killmaster? What's wrong? Uh, nothing. This poem feels completely different from everything else Sayori's written. But more than that... I changed my mind! I'm going to get Sayori, so... Huh? Well, alright. Try not to take too long, okay? I quickly leave the classroom. Don't straighten yourself. Monica calls that out after me. What the fuck is that supposed to mean? I quicken my pace. What was I thinking? I should have tried a little bit harder for Sayori. It's not a big deal to at least wait for her or help her wake up. Even the simple gesture of walking her to school makes her really happy. Besides, I told her yesterday that things will be the same as they always have been. That's all she needs and what I want to give her. I reach Sayori's house and knock on the door. I don't expect an answer since she's not picking up her phone, either. Like yesterday, I open the door and let myself in. Sayori? She really is a heavy sleeper. I swallow. Can't believe I ended up doing this after all. Waking her up in her own house. Isn't that more like something a boyfriend would do? In any case. It just feels right. Outside Sayori's room, I knock on her door. Sayori? Wake up, dummy. There's no response. I really didn't want to have to enter a room like this. Isn't that kind of a breach of privacy? She really leaves me no choice. I gently open the door. Sayori!
What the hell? What the hell? Is this a nightmare? It has to be. This isn't real. There's no way this can be real. Sayori wouldn't do this. Everything was normal up until a few days ago. That's why I can't believe what my eyes are showing me. I suppressed the urge to vomit. Just yesterday. I told Sayori I would be there for her. I told her I know what's best and that everything will be okay. Then why? Why would she do this? How could I be so helpless? What did I do wrong? Turning down a confession? That has to have been what pushed her over the edge. Her agonized scream still echoes in my ears. Why did I do that to her when she needed me the most? Why was I so selfish? This is my fault! My swarming thoughts keep telling me everything I could have done to prevent this. If I just spent more time with her. Walked her to school. Gave her what I know she wanted out of our relationship. Then I could have prevented this. I know I could have prevented this. Screw the literature club. Screw the festival. I just lost my best friend. Someone I grew up with. She's gone forever now. The thing I do can bring her back. This isn't some game where I can reset and try something different. Yeah, shame about that. I had only one chance and I wasn't careful enough. And now I'll carry this guilt with me until I die. Nothing in my life is worth more than hers. But I still couldn't do what she needed from me. And now, I can never take it back. Never. 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 Never? Never. Except, you know, I totally can't- oh, what the fuck? Except I totally can do that. I did the thing, right? Oh. It's broken. Oh, I'm gonna have to skip a lot of text for this one, huh? Oh, wait, what the fuck? Okay, the game broke. Game machine broke. I see an annoying girl running toward me from the distance, waving her arms in the air like she's totally oblivious to any attention she might draw to herself. That girl is fucking my neighbor and good friend since we were children. You know, the kind of friend you never see. We stop working, we used to walk, and then she's gonna chase after me like this. Like, oh my. Just. Okay. It's an ordinary school day like any other. Mornings are usually the worst. Being surrounded, meanwhile, I've always walked to school alone. It's about time I meet some girls. I have no motivation to join any clubs. I'm content just getting by on the average while pissing day away. Games. Video games. Fucking video games. Clubs. Am I right? There really aren't any that interest me. And most of them are whack. I guess I gotta start with the Aminate Cook Killmaster? Onika! Oh my goodness, I totally didn't expect to see you here. It's been a while, right? Ah. Yeah, it has. Monica smiles sweetly. We do know each other. Well, we rarely talk, but we were in the same class last year. Monica is probably the most popular girl in class. Totally out of my league. Sorry, your smile at me so genuinely feels a little- What is you- Why are you here? Oh, I've just been looking for some supplies to use for my club. Do you know if there's any construction paper in here? Or markers? I guess you can check the closet. You're in the debate club, right? Eh, about that. I actually quit the debate club. Really? You quit? Yeah, to be honest, I can't stand all the pol- Oh no, god, I've been here before. Ugh. What club did you decide to join? Actually, I'm starting a new one. A literature club. Literature? That sounds kind of... dull. How many members do you have so far? Um... <laughs> it's kind of embarrassing that there are only three of us so far. It's really hard to find new members for something that sounds so boring. Well, I can see that. It's really not boring at all, you know? Literature can be anything. Reading, writing, poetry. I mean, one of my members even keeps a manga collection in the club room. Wait, really? Yeah, it's funny, right? She always insists that manga is literature, too. I mean, she's not wrong, I guess. But besides, a member's a member, right? Monica say she? Hmm. 
Hey, Killmaster, by any chance, are you still looking for a club to join? Uh, I mean, I guess so, but... In that case, is there any chance you could do me a big favor? I won't ask you to join, but... If you could at the very least visit my club, it would make me really happy. Please? Um... Well, I guess I have no reason to refuse. Besides, how could I ever refuse someone like Monica? Sure, I guess I could check it out. Ah, awesome. You're really sweet, Killmaster, you know that? It's nothing, really. Shall we go now? I'll look for the materials another time. You're more important. And thus today marks the day I sold my soul to Monica and her irresistible smile. I timidly follow Monica across the school and upstairs, a section of the school I rarely visit, being generally used for third year classes and activities. Monica, full of energy, swings open the classroom door. I'm back! And I brought a guest with me. Eh? I, I guess. Seriously? You brought a boy? Way to kill the atmosphere. Don't be mean, Natsuki. But anyway, welcome to the club, Killmaster. All words escape me in this situation. This club... is full of incredibly cute girls! So, let me guess, you're Monica's boyfriend, right? What? No, I'm not! Natsuki, the girl with the sour attitude whose name is apparently Natsuki, is one I don't recognize. The small figure makes me think she's probably a first year. Anyway, this is Natsuki, energetic as usual, and this is Yuri, the vice president. It's nice to meet you. Yuri, who appears com comparably more mature and timid, seems to have a hard time keeping up with someone like Natsuki. Yeah, it's nice to meet both of you. So, I ran into Killmaster in a classroom and he decided to come check out the club. How about that? Wait, Monica, didn't I tell you to let me know in advance before you brought anyone new? I was gonna... well, you know. Sorry, sorry. I did forget that, but I just happened to run into him. In that case, I should at least make some tea, right? Yeah, that would be great. Why don't you come sit down, Killmaster? The girls have a few desks arranged to form a table. Yuri walks to the corner of the room and opens the closet. Meanwhile, Monica and Natsuki sit across from each other. Still feeling awkward, I take a seat next to Monica. So I know you didn't really plan on coming here, but we'll make sure you feel right at home, okay? As president of the Literature Club, it's my duty to make the club fun and exciting for everyone. I'm surprised there aren't more people in the club yet. It must be hard to start a new club. You could put it that way. Not many people are very interested in putting out all the effort to start something brand new. Especially when there's something that doesn't grab your attention, like literature. You have to work hard to convince people you're both fun and worthwhile. But to make school events, like the festival, that much more important. I'm confident that we can all really grow this club before we graduate. Right, Natsuki? Well... I guess. Natsuki reluctantly agrees. Such different girls, all interested in the same goal. Monica must have worked really hard just to find these two. Yuri returns to the table, carrying a tea set. She carefully places the teacup in front of each of us before setting down the teapot in the middle. Keep a whole tea set in this classroom? Don't worry, the teachers gave us permission. After all, doesn't a hot cup of tea help you enjoy a good book? Maybe! Hey, <laughs> don't let yourself get intimidated. Yuri's just trying to impress you. Alright. Uh, uh... This is a bit too familiar. It's all messed up. It's messed up. And my name is scarily appropriate now. I am the master of the kill, but not in the way you would think. Or maybe it is. I don't know. Oh boy. This is... Come on. Do something different. Come on. I'm waiting for it. See, the skip, skip option is grayed out, so I have to click through this normally. But I've, I've been here already. Try to get to the, to the new stuff. A horror book, huh? Yeah, that's the... Uh, hmm. Yeah, it's Susie Personality area. Horror it's something. Surreal horror is often very successful and changes the way you look at the world. Oh, why do you hate horror, Nasky? Because you're a punk. That's why. And maybe you know something I don't, Nasky. Oh, boy. 
Ugh. That's gay, write your own poems. Bullshit. Why don't you share them sometime? What are you scared? I wouldn't like them? It's really presumptuous of you. Considering what happened last time I streamed this. Yuri, do you have writing experience? Yeah, you totally do, but you're also a punk, so you're not gonna show anything. Let's go home and write a poem of our own. Then we they can do the thing. Then everyone will be the thing. I think you're right, Monica. We should do stuff together. I am the vice president, after all. I should try to nurture every club. New members. Let's do it. I agree, but hang on. I never said I was part of the club. See? Remember? Remember what I said this last time? Oh, they're doing the thing again when they look at me. Can you not look at me, though? I guess I need to tell you the truth, Killmaster. The thing is, we don't have enough members yet to form an official club. We need four, and I've been trying really, really hard to find new members. And if we don't find one more before the festival, we'll all die. I'm defenseless against these girls and their stipulations and their club dying. And Yuri's boobs are all in my face. What the hell? Why not? I've made my decision. Oh wow, that actually worked? I mean, really? You really mean that, Killmaster? Yeah, it could be fun, right? It really just scare me for a moment. I mean, if you really just left after all this, I would be super pissed. Ugh. We could be the real club now. Thanks, Monica. You're... You're fine. You're you're fine. For now. Write a poem to bring to the next meeting. Do it. Do it. Can I impress Monica with my poem? Should I? Should I try? I gotta get the hell out of here. Oh wait, my mind wanders back and forth between the three girls. Natsuki, Yuri, and Monica. Will I really be happy spending every day after school in a literature club? Perhaps I'll have the chance to go closer to one of these girls. Alright, I just need to make the most of my circumstances, so I'm sure good fortune will find me. I gotta do the poem. I've unlocked a special poem. Would you like to read it? N yes. I can't read this. This isn't words. This is a slide puzzle. What am I supposed to do with this? What was that? The hell was that? Top right. Don't care. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Give me it. I have games to beat and masters to kill. Nah, don't worry. I ain't gonna run. I said I was gonna do it, so I'm doing it. Oh. Hey, there's something wrong with your face there, Yuri. You keep dive head first in the literature, but you're not accustomed to it. Oh, come on, like he deserves any slack. We're just gonna ignore that, by the way. That didn't actually just happen over there. Hey, you're in front of the text, Monica. Get your fat ass out of the way. Manga is literature. Asuke pops back into her seat. Make sure to put your comfort first, okay. Music's going a little crazy. Music needs to relax, too. I'm not here in the club at all. Perhaps you might have interest in picking up a book to read. Anything to distract me from the craziness that's happening? You know? You don't really want to, then... Just don't. No, it's not that. I want to try to be a part of the club, so even if I don't read often... If you want me to read, I'll fucking read! Jeez! This is so much pressure. Yeah, recommend me a book, Yuri. 
picked out a book I thought you might enjoy. It's a short read, so it should keep your attention, even if you're not that smart. And we could, you know, discuss it if you wanted. This is... This is... familiar? Thank you. I'll definitely read this. For real this time. Now that everyone's settled in, I expected Monica to kick off some scheduled activities for the club, but that doesn't seem to be the case. Yuri's face is already buried in a book. I can't help but notice her intense expression like she was waiting for this chance. Meanwhile, Natsuki is rummaging around in the closet. I'm really curious to talk to Yuri a little bit more, but at the same time I feel bad for distracting her from reading. I catch a glimpse of the cover of her book. It looks like the same book she lent to me. More than that, she seems to be on the first few pages. Oh no, she noticed me looking at her. So hide her face deeper in a book. I was spacing out. I wasn't staring at you or anything. I'm not a weirdo. That's the book you gave me, right? Yes. I wanted to reread some of it. Not because you're reading it or anything. I mean, what? Don't look at me like that. I just happened to buy two of the same book. There's nothing weird. What's with the interrogation all of a sudden, Killmaster? Once it starts to pick up, you might have a hard time putting it back on the floor where you got it from. Portion of Markov. Ev, really just can't turn into a human experiment person. The people trapped there have this trait that turns them into killing machines that lust for blood. But the facility gets even worse and they start selectively breeding people by cutting off their limbs and offensing them to... Uh, that might be a little bit of a spoiler. But anyway, I'm really into it. The book, I mean. Not to think about the limbs. That's kind of dark, isn't it? Yeah, the other one was less dark than that. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, Yuri's totally into all this. This, uh, bizarre stuff. The world is full of horrible people, and we're all worthless anyway. And suddenly, uh, whoa, Tex, don't just be doing that. Ugh. My whole body gets, what, what the, f Yuri, what's going on? I will stop you if you start talking in that weird font. Stop doing that. In fact, I might as well get started reading it. Right now- Oh god, that was red. I don't like red. Red is bad. Let me just get the book. It's fine if I sit next to you, right? Yeah, right next to it. Just get all up in there. You know what time it is. Just tell me if I end up distracting you or anything. Alright. Soon understand what Yuri means about reading in company. It's as if I could feel her presence over my shoulder as I read. It's also all around the room for some reason. Like, I can feel her everywhere. What's happening? Oh god, I can read some of that! God damn it! I don't like the way this is going. I don't know if I, I don't know if making the text go this fast was a good idea, but maybe it was. Considering, but I just fucking read. Oh boy. Here he takes the left arm and holds the left side of the book between her thumb and forefinger. I do the same with my right arm on the right side of the book. That way, I turn a page and it wrist lies under her thumb after it flips to her side. But I'm holding it like this. Hold it even closer together than before. It's actually kind of distracting me. It's as if I could feel the warmth of Yuri's face, which is in the corner of my vision. Are you ready? To turn the page. Ah, oh, sorry. I think I got a bit distracted for a second. I glance over at Yuri's face again and her eyes meet. I don't know how I'll be able to keep up with her. She reads so fast, you know? It's like her eyes are machines. Since you've been so patient with me. Yeah, I have. 
now I know when she's ready for me to turn the page, because she reads so much faster than I do. Intimate page turning. Hey Yuri, this might be a silly thought, but the main character kind of reminds me of you a little bit. Uh, I don't relate to this character. You're crazy. No way. Really? I was just thinking the way she second guesses things she says and all that. That's what she were talking about. Sorry. I thought you meant something else about her. Something else? Hey, never mind. We didn't even get that far yet. So I don't know why that came into my head. Ha <laughs> ha. Yuri, are you feeling alright? Eh. Yuri's been a little fidgety ever since we started reading. You can rest if you're feeling sick or something. Your breathing is a little... Like right now? Yuri puts her hands on her chest as if to feel her heartbeat. I didn't even notice. Anyway, I'm fine! I just need some water. Alright, don't push yourself. Yuri stands up and practically rushes out of the classroom. What the fuck?! Killmaster? Did something happen just now? Eh? I have no idea. Yuri was acting a little strange, I guess. So you don't know anything. Sorry, can't say I do. Are you worried about her? Oh no, not really. I was just making sure you didn't do anything to her. Oh, I did- Listen. Listen. Okay. Yuri just does this sometimes, so it's nothing alarming. Alright, if you say so. Anyway, why don't we start with sharing our poems with each other? Shouldn't we wait for Yuri? Well, she might be a while, so I just said fuck it, let's go. Is that okay? Yeah, I was just asking. I stand up. I make a mental note of where I left off in the book, then slip it back into my bag. Bookmarks are for suckers. It's a waste of money. She seemed eager to read my poem, and I want her to know I'm putting in the work. Hi, Killmaster. Having a good time so far? No. Good, glad to hear it. By the way, since you're new at everything, if you ever have any suggestions for the club, like new activities and things we could do better, I'm always listening. Don't be afraid to bring things up, okay? Alright, I'll keep that in mind. Of course I'll be afraid to bring things up. I'm much better off just going with the flow until I'm more settled in. Wanna share your poem with me? It's kind of embarrassing, but I guess I have to. I don't have a choice. We're all a little embarrassed today, you know? But it's that sort of barrier that we'll all learn to get past soon. Yeah, that's true. I hand on to come my poem. Great job, Killmaster! I was going ooh in my head while reading it. It's really metaphorical. I'm not sure why, but I didn't expect you to go for something so deep. I guess I underestimated you. It's easiest for me to keep everyone's expectations low. That way it always counts when I put in some effort. That's not very fair. Well, I guess it worked anyway. You know that Yuri likes this kind of writing, right? Writing that's full of imagery and symbolism. Sometimes I feel like Yuri's mind is just totally detached from reality. I don't mean that like it's a bad thing though. It might be a bad thing though, but sometimes I get the impression that she's just totally given up on people. She spent so much time in her own head that it's probably a much more interesting place for her. That's why she gets so happy when you treat her with a lot of kindness. I don't think she's used to being indulged like that. She must be really starved for social interaction, so don't blame her for coming on a little strongly. Like earlier. I think if she gets too stimulated, she ends up withdrawing and looking for some alone time. Suddenly, the door opens. It's Yuri! She made it in time. Did I miss anything? Not really. Well, we all started sharing our poems with each other. You missed that. Already? Sorry for being late. No need to apologize. We still have plenty of time, so I'm more glad that you took all the time you needed. Alright. Thanks, Monica. I suppose I should get my poem now. Anyway, do you want to read my poem now? Don't worry, I'm not very good. You sound pretty confident for someone who claims to be not very good. Well, that's because I have to sound confident. That doesn't mean I always feel that way, you know? I see. So you're a liar. Got it. Well, let's read it, though. Hole in wall. But he wasn't looking at me. Confused, I frantically glance at my surroundings, but my burned eyes can no longer see color. Are there others in this room? Are they talking? Or are they simply poems on flat sheets of paper? The sound of frantic scrolling playing tricks on my ears. The room begins to crinkle, closing in on me. The air I breathe dissipates before it reaches my lungs. I panic. There must be a way out. It's right there. He's right there. Swallowing my fears, I brandish my pen. 
That's all, what do you think? It's very free form, if that's what you call it. Sorry, I'm not really the right person to ask for feedback. It's okay. Yeah, that kind of style has gotten pretty popular nowadays. There's a lot of posts of if an epiphany. Something like that. Maybe after everyone's better friends with each other. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Sometimes when you're writing a poem or a story, your brain gets too fixated on a specific point. If you try so hard to make it perfect, then you'll never make any progress. Just force yourself to get something down on the paper and tidy it up later. Another way to think about it is this. If you keep your pen in the same spot for too long, you'll just get a big dark puddle of ink. So just move your hand and go with the flow. That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. I'm saving Yuri for less. Alright, I'm just gonna press the skip button for this. As he rereads the poem, I notice our eyes light on. Exceptional. Uh, what was that? Did, did I say that out loud? Yuri first covers her mouth, but then so ends up covering her old face. <sighs> it's gonna hate me. Um, you really didn't do anything wrong, Yuri. Uh, that's... I guess you're right. Why am I getting so nervous for her? <laughs> Yuri takes a breath. So... What kind of writing experience do you have? The use of imagery and metaphors in the case you've written a lot of poetry before. Really? Oh, that's a huge compliment coming from you. This is actually my first time, really. Huh? Yuri stares at me blankly, then looks at my poem again. Well, I know that. I just met... Um... Yuri trails off, unable to find an excuse. She traces her finger along the words in the poem, as if br breaking it down more thoroughly. Yeah... Okay. This is the reason I was able to tell. It's just that there are specific writing habits that are usually typical of new writers, and having been through that myself, I kind of learned to pick up on them. I think the most notable thing is they skip. Yeah, I just skipped that shit. There's nothing really. Yours is impressive too, so... Eh, if anything, I could probably learn a thing or two from you. You think so? Yeah, of course. Ah, you know, I was really nervous about doing all this. In the end, I enjoyed it. I'm going to keep doing my best for you, Killmaster. Uh, me too. Ooh, I guess that's everyone. All three of them. That was a little more stressful than I anticipated. This is if everyone is judging me for my mediocre writing abilities. Even if they're just being nice, that's not why my poems can stand up to theirs. This is a literature club, after all. I sigh. I guess that's what I ended up getting myself into. Across the room, Monica is writing something in her notebook. My eyes land on Yuri and Natsuki. They gingerly exchange sheets of paper, sharing their respective poems. As they read in tandem, I watch each of their expressions change. Natsuki's eyebrows furrow in frustration. Meanwhile, Yuri smiles sadly. What's with this language? Huh? Um, did you say something? Oh, it's nothing. Natsuki dismissively returns the poem to the desk with one hand. I guess you could say it's fancy. Uh, thanks. Yours is cute. Cute? Did you completely miss the symbolism or something? It's clearly about the feeling of giving up. How could that be cute? I know that. I just meant the language, I guess. I was trying to say something nice. Huh? I mean, you have to try that hard to come up with something nice to say. Thanks, but it really didn't come out nice at all. Um, well, I do have a couple suggestions. Hmm. If I was looking for suggestions, I would have asked someone who actually liked it. Which people did, by the way. Monica liked it. And Killmaster did too. So based on that, I'll gladly give you some suggestions of my own. First of all, excuse me. I appreciate the offer, but I've spent a long time establishing my writing style. I don't expect it to change anytime soon, unless of course I come across something particularly inspiring. Which I haven't yet. And Killmaster liked my poem too, you know. He even told me he was impressed by it. Natsuki suddenly stands up. Oh, I didn't realize you were so invested in trying to impress our new member, Yuri. That's not what I... Uh, you're just... Yuri stands up as well. Maybe you're just jealous that Killmaster appreciates my advice more than he appreciated yours. Huh? And how do you know he didn't appreciate my advice more? Because I skipped your advice, maybe? Are you that full of yourself? No. 
If I was full of myself, I would deliberately go out of my way to make everything I do overly cutesy. Well, you know what? I wasn't the one whose boobs magically grew a size bigger as soon as Killmaster started showing up. Nasuke. Um, Nasuke, that's a little... This doesn't involve you, Monika. God. Taking out your own insecurities on others like that. You really act as young as you look, Nasuke. Me? Look who's talking, you wannabe edgy bitch! Edgy? Sorry that my lifestyle is too much for someone of your mental age to comprehend. See? Just saying that proves my point. Most people learn to get over themselves after they graduate middle school, you know. If you want to prove anything, then stop harassing others with your sickening attitude. You think you can counterbalance your toxic personality just by dressing and acting cute? The only cute thing about you is how hard you try. Well, be careful, you might cut yourself on that edge, Yuri. Oh, my bad. You already do, don't you? Did you just accuse me of cutting myself? What the fuck is wrong with your head? Yeah, go on. Let Killmaster hear everything he really thinks. I'm sure he'll be head over heels for you after this. Ah! Suddenly, Yuri turns towards me as if she just noticed I was standing here. Killmaster! She, she's just trying to make me look bad. That's not true. She started it. Okay. Should I go the way I did before, or should I try the other way? Alright, fuck it. That's apparently the wrong choice. Let's do it again. Let's keep pressing it. Let's press it some more. Even more. Let's press it until it goes away. What? What do you want? Monica, what do you want? What? Um, hey, Killmaster, why don't we step outside for a little bit, okay? Sorry about that. They really shouldn't have tried to get you involved. It's probably better for us to stay out of this. We'll go back inside once they're done yelling. <laughs> Some president I am, right? I can't even confront my own club members properly. Just wish I was able to be a little more assertive sometimes. But I never have it in me to put my foot down against others. You understand, right? Anyway, if this makes you want to spend less time with the others, then that's fine. I'd be happy to spend time with you instead. Suddenly, Natsuki runs out the classroom. She's crying. She quickly runs away. Oh dear. Well, it looks like they're done. I didn't mean it. I didn't mean it. I didn't mean it. Yuri is rocking back and forth in her desk with her palms on her forehead. Yuri? I didn't mean it. I believe you. I have no idea what Yuri might have said to Natsuki. Or did. Killmaster, please don't hate me. Please, I'm not like this. There's something wrong with me today. It's fine, Yuri. We know you didn't mean it. Besides, I'm sure Natsuki will forget all about it by tomorrow. Completely. Anyway, the meeting is over, so you can go home now if you want. Yuri looks at me like she wants to say something. But she keeps glancing at Monica. You can go first, Monica. I'd like to stay a little bit longer. I'm the president, so I should be the last one out. I'll wait for you to be done. Well, I'm vice president, so please let me take that responsibility today. It kind of sounds like you don't want me around for something, Yuri. It's not that. It's not that. I just... I didn't get much of a chance to discuss my book with Killmaster. It would just be embarrassing with you listening. Sigh. I guess I don't really have a choice, do I? I'm sorry for causing trouble. They really... 